Johnny Hurz has a video on how he edits his maps, but he doesn't go too deep into his workflow. So today, I'm going to break it down for you so you can create maps just like him. This is part of an ongoing series to understand his style and we'll be doing everything map related inside of GLOS 3. So the first thing we need to do is create a map comp. I have two created already, but you'll probably have none. Just come right here and choose create map comp. And for me, I'm going to be doing China, so I'm going to type China in the search bar right here. This is where I want my map to start, so I'm just going to click that, and I'm going to rename my map comp to be something like tutorial, but you can name yours whatever you want. The duration here, I'm just going to make it a solid 60 seconds. So for your map style, Johnny Hurst a lot of time uses this Bing Aerial style. There are other styles he sometimes uses, and you can pick whichever style you want to use, but I'm going to go ahead with Bing Aerial. Once you've clicked that, just go ahead and select Create. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is you can see we have these map labels. We want to go ahead and go to our map settings and turn these labels off. So just click this little icon here and come into your map comp settings and then click this right here and you can turn off the map comp labels and just hit apply. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is in GeoLayers you have a low quality map image as you're editing and it acts as kind of a proxy to the real map. So you're not editing these super high quality images. I'm going to hold control and click finalize and that's going to finalize a single frame. We want to really nail down our style on this frame and then at the end we'll finalize the entire map comp and it's going to render everything out for us. So to start we want to use a tritone effect and that's going to let us play with the colors of the map comp. I'm going to set mine to a bluish color so I'm going to take this mid tone and just bring it up and I think something like this is pretty good. So for my shadows I'm also going to make it a dark blue. So I think this is pretty good. I'm going to take my highlights as well and see what I can make them look like. So I like this color right here. Next, to really make this pop just a little bit more, I'm going to add a levels effect. And I'm just going to bring the values down and shift them just a little bit to brighten up the image. Depending on your colors, you might have to play with that a little bit more. So now we can kind of do this zoom in animation. So if we come over here on our GeoLowers panel, we can set a keyframe at this position. And if we uh, move these keyframes up, this is where we want it to end up at. So I'm going to move it up just a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom out here. I want to start over here closer to Japan. So I've got my starting position dialed in. Now I'm going to come to my final position and I'm just going to click this link map comp view to refresh it and make sure it's where my actual timeline is. I'm just going to bring this in and set it to how I want it. So I think something like this is pretty good. So now if we play this back, we get something like this. So it's a little fast for me. So I'm just going to come ahead and highlight all of these and bring them down. And at this start position, I don't want it to be too tilted, so I'm just going to bring it more straight up and put a little bit more rotation in there. So the next thing we're going to do is actually draw in our China map here. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so in GeoLows, if you just type in the landmass you want, you can actually download it. So we want the country, People's Republic of China. I'm just going to add it to my browser. And I'm going to come here, and you can see I already have it in my browser from a previous comp, uh, but you'll probably just have one. I'm going to create a custom style for this and I'm going to color this uh, to be red and I don't want to do a pure red just a little bit of a lighter red and I do want to make sure I have this stroke on as well and um, we can use the fill color for that and just hit apply and now if we come down here we could draw the feature with our style selected so it's going to give us a shape layer here of China and I actually want to turn this stroke down because it's a little too thick for me so maybe something like 13 looks good to me I'm going to make my stroke color a very solid red just so it stands out from the fill. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is come to this shape layer here and I'm going to set the blend mode to be multiply. And it's going to make it look a lot nicer on our map comp. Uh, to bring this up one more level, I'm going to add a glow effect to it. So instead of fading the transparency when we come up here, I'm actually going to fade the glow with this. So I'm going to set the threshold keyframe and just bring it all the way down to zero. And you can see that's kind of making it uh, disappear. And when we come back, to this position, or maybe a little before. I'm going to set the glow threshold to be 100%. So it's fully on the screen. So I'm going to collapse this shape lower so we can see everything. I'm going to set these keyframes to easy ease as well. So to mess with this a little more, I'm going to bring this glow radius up just so we have the edges peeking out there as well. And we actually don't need to use 100 for this. I'm going to set it at like 50, just so we can see that transition a little more. And you can see it's kind of filling in the shape as we zoom in. I'm also going to take the transparency on this and just bring it down just a little bit so it's not as harsh. Okay, so I think that's looking pretty good. Next thing I'm going to do is the text of the country. So I'm using this font here, it's called Balto, and I have it set to bold, and I'm just going to type in China. And you really want to come up here to your text layer and set this vertical spacing uh, 
to be very high. I have mine set to 400 and I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to scale this up just a little bit as well. And we want this text to fade in uh, right after the zoom finishes. So I'm just going to bring this over here on my playhead and have the transparency set to 0. And then come forward just a little bit and set it to 100. So I'm just going to give that a little bit more space and I'm going to add a glow effect to this text layer as well. I'm going to set easy ease to this. And the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and create this character icon that you see in a lot of his videos. Uh, where it's kind of like a hexagon with a person through it. So I'm just going to come up here to the shape layer here and I'm going to select the polygon tool. I'm just going to hold shift while creating a polygon. And you want to come in here to the polygon path and make sure your points are set to 5. So if it's something like higher you're going to get a lot more points. Uh, so you want to make sure it's set to 5. And I'm actually going to take this layer here and I'm going to pre-compose it. I'm going to rename this person icon. But now if I come into here, we have our shape layer, and I'm going to go ahead and center this on our composition. I'm just going to scale this up as well, and center it once more. So I want this to be white, and I don't actually want to have a fill, so I'm going to go ahead and click this fill and turn it off. I'm going to set this stroke to be white, as right, so we want to add a glow to this stroke as well. So now I'm going to go ahead and bring in my image. Okay, so I got my image in, and I'm just going to resize this just a little bit so it fits in. It doesn't have to fit in perfectly because we're going to mask it out. So I'm just going to position this where I want it, and it doesn't matter if it's overflowing because we're going to go ahead and mask it out. So I'm just going to take my pen tool and draw out where it's overflowing, and I'm going to set this to a subtract mask. I'm going to go ahead and do that here as well. Okay, so I've done that, and now I'm going to go ahead and bring him to the bottom. And we want to set a mask on this shape layer as well. So anywhere his head is, we're just going to go ahead and mask that out as well. We're going to invert this mask. Okay, so I'm also going to set a black and white effect on the source image. And for me, I'm going to add a levels effect as well. Just to make these colors pop a little bit more. Okay, so finally, I want to come to this shape layer. And I'm going to mess with its glow settings a little bit. I just bring the radius up, and I'm also going to duplicate this to give us a little bit of a better glow. And bring this radius down. Okay, so I messed with mine a little bit, and I think this is looking pretty good. So now we can come back to our tutorial comp. We're just going to take this B comp and scale it down so it fits a little bit more cohesively. So we want him to also fade in at the same time as our text. I'm just going to do that like this. And set these to easy ease as well. Okay, so I'm going to select both of these and just bring them down a little bit so they fit in the country a little bit better. Okay, so if I play this back, this is how it's looking so far. Now all we have left to do is add our adjustment layers and really just dial in the style a little bit more. So I'm going to add a adjustment layer and this one's going to be our vignette. I'm just going to add the CC vignette effect to this. And you can mess with the settings a little bit. Um, I'm pretty happy with how it looks outside the box so I'm just going to keep it uh, close to those settings. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is duplicate this vignette and I'm going to delete it on the second layer and we're going to call this one optics. And I'm going to add an optic compensation to this. And I'm going to select this box here. It says reverse lens distortion. And I'm going to bring this way up. And that's going to bring the edges of our composition in just a little bit. Okay, I think it's looking pretty good around 30. I'm going to duplicate this one as well. And we're going to add a blur to the edges to kind of simulate a depth of field. So I'm going to use a Gaussian blur. And just bring this up. And I'm going to create a mask for this adjustment layer and only do the tops and the bottoms of it. And we need to invert this mask. And make sure you feather this mask so it's not as harsh. You can see that's giving us a nice depth of field effect. Okay, so the final thing I want to do is on this vignette layer, I'm going to add a chromatic aberrations. So I have a tutorial on chromatic aberrations if you want to learn how to make a preset for this and set all of this up so it looks just like this. But I'm going to set this to 1 in 101. So I'm going to come up here to this blur layer and rename it to be blur. And I'm just going to move it just a little bit because it looks like we're losing focus on his head. So I'm just going to adjust it. And I think it's looking pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and do a van window of this and show you what it looks like. Okay, so if we play it back. This is our final product. So I hope you learned something from this. Uh, if you did, check out my other videos. Uh, this is part of an ongoing series uh, where I'm going to be showing how to create map animations uh, in this geopolitical style a lot like Johnny Harris. So uh, subscribe for more.